Hey folks, today Kay and I have come out to the beach at Brighton La Sands in Sydney. Sadly, it's the last day we're shooting together before I move to New York City, so I want to make this last video great. I recently bought the 105 f1.4 Nikkor lens. It's a great portrait lens, and one of my most popular videos I've ever made is about what's the best portrait lens for Nikon. So today we're going to redo that video, adding some truly primo lenses. Okay, <laughs> Okay. so for this one, I know a lot of these lenses are completely out of the realm of most shooters because they're really expensive, but hell, if Top Gear can get the most expensive supercars, so can we. This guy is, for me, the Ford GT40. It's expensive, it comes from a mainline manufacturer though. They're kind of accessible, but still an absolutely great performer. Let's take a look at the other lenses that we're gonna be going through in this video. So I've chosen out seven exceptional portrait lenses for this test and they're all ones that I own and use regularly. Firstly, the 50mm f1.2 from Nikon, the Tamron 85mm 1.8 VC, the Nikon 85 1.4G, the Zeiss Otis 85mm 1.4, the new Nikon 105 1.4 E lens, the 70-200 f2.8 and the Beast, the 200 f2. The 85 1.4G is just such a good lens. It's one of the best, sharpest, contrastiest, I think one of the best lenses Nikon makes and certainly a portrait legend. If we were talking about cars, this would be like your latest generation GTR Godzilla. Are you into cars at all? Mm -hmm. That's fine. You guys probably are. It's, you know, it's not that exotic, but it just performs beautifully. There's a lot of imitators out there, but this one really is just top level. Shooting with it is just so great. It never seems to miss focus. I've rarely ever heard of anyone having an issue with these lenses or selling one after they've gotten one. Okay, the 70 to 200 I included. It's the only zoom in the mix, but this is one that a lot of you own, so it's nice and accessible as a benchmark. Now, I would say that this one is like that, what it was it on um, Top Gear? The Bowler Cat. This can do everything. If you're looking to get only one of these lenses, I would suggest getting this one. It's so versatile, it's great for portraits. Optically, it may not be quite up with these other ones, but it's still absolutely fantastic. I really enjoy shooting with this one and it gives you a lot of flexibility having that zoom range of 70 all the way through to 200 at a constant 2.8. Good? Yeah. <laughs> you right? <laughs> The 105, I just did a video on this one. This is a beautiful lens. As I said, I'd put this one as being like the GT40 from Ford. Mainstream brand, but just a next level performance. I really like this one. It is a lot more expensive than some of the other ones. It's just about you know one of the most expensive Nikon lenses I own. Not compared to one of the other ones we're gonna use, but I really found the focus fast, fantastic, no problems. In terms of usability, it's not too much different from the 85 1.4G, just gives you that extra bit of reach and it's a bit sharper and the backgrounds to me look that little bit better. The Otis, oh my God, there's a reason they named this after a god, right? A god or a bird? It was a bird, it was a god. Yeah, one of the gods had a bird. <gasps> oh, great Odin's Raven. This to me is the Koenigsegg. Handmade, it's manual focus, it's really specialist, but when you get it right, it's just off the charts. But it's crazy expensive, it's crazy niche. If you learn how to use it, then you'll get the absolute best performance out of it. But for a lot of people, it's gonna be just too unwieldy in real world situations. Shooting anything that's fast moving, you're gonna need years of practice to be able to absolutely nail a shot with this. But if you've got the time and patience to get it right, you really get rewarded with this lens. You right, Toots? Yeah. The 51.2, I don't know, this is like an old D-Beast 9 or 7 that Bond would have used, except that they're still making them. It's a really fun lens to shoot with. It's not as easy to focus as the Otis. You know, the focus throw is not nearly as much. Optically, it's not nearly as good but it is the fastest Nikon lens currently in production and it's just got history and a beautiful feel to it. It's kind of like a weekend collector's car. Despite being an old design, the 50 mil is still selling for 700 US dollars. The Tamron 1.8 85mm with VC, for me it's kind of like, it's like my car actually. Nikon, Nissan 350Z convertible automatic. 
It's not really that sporty, but it's really great to use and it's easy to get good results. The VC is really helpful, the focus is fast enough, and at 750 bucks, this one just offers a lot for the money. Lucky last, the beast. Look at the size of this thing, it's like half a K. Actually, it weighs about two Ks. <laughs> um, this, for me, is like a Bugatti Veyron Super Sport. It's so big, so heavy, but it just performs like you would not believe. The focus on this, it's faster than any of the other ones that I'm using. It's just astonishing, and I love what it does to the background. I haven't tested any other lens that can do quite the same thing as this. Now, as I said in my uh, 105 video, if you replicate the frame, a 1.4, no matter the focal length, gives you a shallower depth of field than a 1.8 or an f2. So this is not getting, on paper, as shallow a depth of field as the 85s that I was using, or the 105, but the compression this gives you on the background, and just the way the sharps are so sharp, and the background is instantly creamy, it just, it like you, it's like a layer mask in a lens. You instantly have the person separated out from the background and ready to work with. I just love the result this one gives you, but at $5,700 and a huge weight, it's really specialist. The great thing, you can throw a teleconverter on, make it into a 400 f4, for example, so for travel and birding and stuff, I love this lens. For portrait, I do too, but for a longer shoot, you definitely want to get a monopod. It's really heavy. Okay, so how this video is going to run. I'm going to shoot away and share with you a bunch of images where I replicate the frame. As I've said so many times, your frame matters. So if I'm shooting with the 105, I'll be twice as far away as if I'm with the 50 mil, or twice as close as if I'm with the 200 mil to get the same final frame on K. We've got four different outfits. So on each of the different outfits, I'll show you sample images on each of the lenses without telling you which is which, and you can decide which one to your eye looks best. And I'll also make files available for you to download and pixel peep to your heart's content. So let's get shooting. Looking lovely. All right, folks, so what makes a great portrait lens? That's really going to be up to you. For me, I'm looking for a couple of things. In terms of image quality, I want it to be razor sharp. Some people say too sharp means too much you need to retouch. I don't care. I don't see skin texture as a blemish. I see it as what makes us unique. Then I want the background blur and the foreground blur to be beautiful. They're the two main things that I want. Of course, I don't want aberrations. I don't want too much vignetting. I want it to handle the flare well as well. But those two are the big ones for me. And then it's all about how it performs in the field. But for now, we're just talking image quality. So for each of these tests, I'm gonna show you the images, let you judge them for yourself before I give you the answer. So check them out and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, here's the reveal. This is the 10514. This is the Otis. This is the Nikon 85mm. This is the Tamron 85mm. This is the 51.2. This was a 70 to 200 at 135mm. And this was the 200 F2. What was your favorite? Let's try them stop down a little. Nice. Starting to get some dappled light here. Would you mind to chuck it up above her? And hopefully not knock her out. Either way though, right? Well, she doesn't need the help it seems. I'll go on the other side. Here we go again, let me know what you think of each one and which one was your favorite. Time for the reveal, here we are, this is the 105 at F2, the Otis at F2, the 85 Nikon at F2, Here's the Tamron at 2.8, the 50mm at f2, and here's the 200 f2 at f2.8. Okay, let's set up another shot, this time up in the play equipment. Okay, for the second shot, 
change of outfit, looking lovely. And of course, we've come to a pirate themed play area. Now for this one, I'm gonna be shooting in landscape orientation. And I wanna show you the fall off in the different areas of the scene, both in front and behind. So first, let's get a shot where everything's in focus. Put it all the way up to F22. This is going to be my frame. So from that red bar to just above her head. Okay, so there you get a sense of how cluttered it is in the background. Let's see what these different lenses can do to eliminate that. Something I noticed when I was shooting with all these different focal lengths, and it relates to the famous 70 to 200 VR2's breathing problem. Okay, using the 200 F2, I am having to move back a bit further to get all of her in. When I was closer up, the 70 to 200's breathing problem was really apparent. Here, I still needed to move about a foot back, even though the 70 to 200 said it was at 200. Madam, turning front on again. Okay, let's take a look through these images now. And again, I won't tell you what's what, just take a look. Pay attention to the number you liked, maybe leave it as a comment and let us know. But as I was shooting these, something popped out. I really should explain this. Okay, so I specially chose this setup with her being at a higher level because that's gonna point something important out. Which lens works for you is really gonna depend on the kind of situations you're shooting in. From a long way away, 200 mil looking up at someone is no big deal. But as we move closer and closer, you're gonna find my angle goes higher and higher up. By the time I'm at my 50 mil, I'm really gonna be shooting right up at her to try and replicate the frame. Okay, so that's gonna help you identify which of the shots. So these are in the same order. That was the 70 to 200 at 28. This is the 200 at F2, the 105-14, the Nikon 85, the Tamron 85, the Zeiss 85, and finally the 51.2. You can see we're really just looking straight up at her there. Okay, now I know I said at the start that we had four outfits, we're cutting it back to three because it's so damn hot today. So Kay was insistent, swimsuits and be done with it. Skip the ball gown. So for now, instead of doing the ball gown as our full length shot, we'll do the swimwear as a full length shot. To get a nice flattering angle, I've talked about this before, you want to be down halfway down the person's body. So if I'm shooting head to toe, pretty much means I want to have my lens about level with her navel. So any distortion is minimized. If you notice that your lens is not parallel to the ground, you're pointing up or down, you're likely to introduce perspective distortion. So for that, because the beach here slides away, I'm gonna to need to actually lay on the ground to get her in shot. So go get your feet wet. Well, she certainly seems to be enjoying herself. Now, the reality of this kind of real world review is the light balance changes and you'll see through these different shots that it Turning was going way. from bright to dark and the sun was changing. I tried my best to try and replicate it in the shots, but this is just the reality of how it goes on a shoot. And when you're using seven different lenses, you know, you'll have to forgive me that some of the test shots are a little bit different in their lighting. So let's have a look through here and work out what are our different shots. Have a look, make note, and leave us a comment below for setup three at the beach, which of these is your favorite? Okay, time for the reveal. First up is the Otis. Next is the 70 to 200. Next is the Nikon 85. Here we go with the Nikon 105. There we go, an obvious shift in lighting with the Tamron 1.8. This is the 51.2. And finally, the 200 F2. And I just love using the 200 F2 so much, I stupidly went into the ocean with her. And yeah, we got a couple of last little shots here with that guy. Okay, so much fun to film with. I'm really gonna miss her. Although I'm not sure she's gonna miss me so much. So, now that you've seen the sample images and know which lens was used for which shot, did any of them stand out for you? Did you guess it right? And which one did you prefer? Let's talk through some of my picks. Now for absolute, oh my God, optical perfection, Great Odin's Raven, it is the Otis. It's, it's just ridiculous. There's nothing that handles flare and backlighting that has so little uh, vignetting. 
and it's just so sharp wide open. It's ridiculous, there's nothing else like this. But it's so expensive and so, you know, niche being manual focus, it's got a tiny limited market that won't suit that many people. For, you know, overall versatility, can't go past the 70 to 200. If you are only going to buy one of these lenses and you're gonna do more than portraiture, this is a lens that should be in your bag. A lot of people will already have this one. It is fantastic. It's not maybe quite at the same optical level as some of these other ones, but it's still absolutely great. No questions about that. Performs well in every regard. Bang for buck, it's my 350Z um, Tamron 85mm. If you're on a budget and you're only going to be shooting portraits, this is the one I would recommend for most people. If you're using a high-res camera, the VC is especially you know, helpful. You're getting great results at what for this group is by far the best bargain price. Okay, fun to use. The one that puts the biggest smile on my face, probably no surprise, it is the 200mm F2. It makes me weak at the knees, but also weak at the shoulders and elbows because it's so heavy. And by the end of the day, you're exhausted partly from holding it, but also partly from constantly backing up to get the right frame for your shot, being a constant long 200 mil. But if 200 mil works for you, there's just no compromise in this. It's absolutely gorgeous. But given the huge price increase over the 70 to 200, it's really hard to justify for most people to lose that flexibility and pay double the money for one stop more of light. Okay, now for bokeh, the beauty of the blur, which one for you stood out? It really depends on your personal taste. If you like the swirly background, then the 105 will be it for you. Some people love it, some people hate it. If you love that really dreamy look and don't mind the heavy vignette and that it's not as sharp, the 51.2 gives a beautiful kind of cinematic, dreamy type feel to it. I really like it. If you want that crazy separation, again, the 200 F2 is really hard to beat. At the end of the day, which one works for you is going to come a lot down to your budget and which focal length works for you. Jump into your editing software and check which focal lengths you tend to use the most, especially if you're tending to use zoom lenses at the moment and you wanna buy a prime, it's a great way to work out which one is going to suit you. You can also check out this video I did at Tony and Chelsea Northrop Studio on how to choose your prime lens. And if you are gonna drop a whole bunch of cash on a supercar of a lens like these, then consider renting one for a weekend to try out if it's actually going to work for you. If you're in North America, you can check out my friends at Lens Pro to go use the coupon GEAROUT10 and get 10% off any of your rentals. Hope you found that video fun. Sad to say that's my last one for a while with Kay because I'm moving to New York, but I hope you really enjoyed it. Please do leave me your comments and feedback below. Cheers guys, and I'll see you soon in New York. But for a long shoot, you're definitely going to want a monopod. Now there's a fly right on my fucking forehead. But for a longer shoot, shh, we're back, we're back. Shh. But for a, okay. but for a longer shoot, you definitely want to get a monopod. It's really heavy. Don't don't put your boob on that element. Oh what? You got sand on your, and then you put it on my lens. No, I don't. You got sand everywhere. No, I don't. You okay?